Uh, Kaiser, I want to talk to you too. I mean, part of your faith should be, I would imagine, is in the fact that the the GM and the coaching staff has, have consistently made good moves for Mad Lions. So that must encourage you to have faith in the organization because when you guys were doing well, but you weren't quite over the top, that's when they identified El Yoyo. You guys switched out Shadow. Then you start winning titles, right? And so they've been very good at identifying up and coming talent. And even if maybe Reeker wasn't quite yet ready yet and you, you guys lost Carzy, um, and, you know, Unforgiven, you're trying to like turn him into a great player and Humanoid was obviously exceptional. You should have some level of faith that they can fix things. And indeed, I would say your faith is being well rewarded because Niski was in, it was insane that Niski wasn't part of a team, let's be honest. Yeah, um, yeah. But they, you guys went and got him and all of a sudden that seems to be fixing a lot of your issues. And your point earlier about Humanoid maybe not having the most depth to his champion pool, I think one thing that we can laud Niski for is that he's a player that has kind of just consistently gotten better over the course of his career. It just feels like every split that goes along, Niski becomes more versatile in his champion pool, a better player. He's one of the few players that we can look at over like five or six years and say, yeah, they've had a pretty steady like upward trajectory. So it feels like... They basically had one slump ever. That's about it. And and criticisms that you could levy against him, such as, oh, he doesn't play that many champions. Well, that a lot of those issues have been solved. He can play a variety of roles in the mid lane, but he's still That's an overcome my main criticisms of not being frogging, but that is hard. It is hard <laughs> to do, I have to say so. Uh, but it's but it's also that he's a very selfless player, as you alluded to earlier. He's a very vocal player when it comes to contributing to the shot calling. So it, it was, in a way, kind of weird to see this very good player at the oh. peak of his personal play not be in a team for the spring split. But they bring him in immediately. They're willing to, you know, to pay whatever price was was necessary to pay because I'm sure he had multiple offers, right? And so, in a way, your faith in the Mad Lions organization has been rewarded again. You guys seem to be back on track. Um, you're, you're looking at a roster that is certainly capable of winning the championship. And I think the meta is moving in a favorable direction for you guys, which I want to talk to you about in a minute. But how has Niski been with this new team? It seems like he's integrated really quickly and that the, the coaches and GMs have done a very good job of making sure that he clicks right away. So what were you guys doing between spring and summer with Niski that allowed you guys to, uh, engineer your synergy and this play style together i mean we actually didn't have to do much uh, i would say like niski is kind of similar to kazi in a way like uh like, like what i said uh earlier uh that he's like more of a i mean he's not a clown he's not as clowny as kazi right but he's still a really funny guy and uh he's really fun to be around uh with and i think like personality wise like he didn't have like i mean i think he was he also knew actually everyone except for me in the team, so he was already like friends with almost everyone, right? And that was kind of, and I think he also uh, played with Mac uh, before in in Spice or something, right? So like, he basically didn't have any downtime in like we had to get to know him or anything, right? Like only me and uh, like only I and him uh, had to like maybe have a talk, right? And uh, see how the other guy like uh, ticks, right? And I think it was really easy to to integrate him in, into the team. I mean, playstyle wise. We kind of knew what we would get, and he kind of delivered on that, right? He he's always really a selfless guy. He's really vocal. Uh, he plays the champions he plays, kind of uh, to to a good level, right? He's, I mean, I wouldn't say he's like a carry, like humanoid, for example. Like he doesn't uh, tell you, yeah, I need this farm. Like give me ten CS per minute, stuff like this. Uh, and I don't think that's what we wanted either. I think we wanted more of a, yeah, uh, like. And Niski, right? Like a selfless player that roams with me and the Yoya to sidelines, and we get the sidelines ahead, and these sidelines will carry us, right? And I think that was our game plan, and uh, Niski wanted to do that as well. So we basically were on the same page from middle one, and yeah, basically no problems. What I find so crazy is, like, obviously, if you go back even beyond, like, one or two years, there never used to even be roster changes between spring and summer. People just sign five players and you just see how the year works out. Basically, it was like the Abbey Dagger to 100 Thieves move last year, sort of woke everyone up to, like, wait a minute, actually, you could maybe turn your fortunes around if you sign the right player. Dude, the two players that got signed are the most ridiculous slam dunks I've ever seen. This shows that people are actually doing a decent job, Monty, of actually, like, identifying what they need in a team. The two signings were Mickey X to XL, and then Niski to Mad Lions. 
both signings, like, instantly, you drop the player in, they do exactly what you want, and they fix the team. Like, well, Mickey X, guess what? He can play a support, engaged champion and help you win team fights. Done it. <laughs> then you have Nisky. Well, the problem is our jungler and our support sort of, like, seem a bit lost. They haven't got the synergy. That's literally, like, all Nisky does like, his entire career. Like, these are the most easy fucking signings of all time. So, great job by the team <laughs> signing. These were the perfect teams for these guys to go to. Well, uh, it's also funny because, like, Nisky, Nisky's has been extremely selfless for this team. And, and to, to, uh, to Kaiser's point, if you look at the games that they've played this split... Uh, Nisky is the he's basically the lowest economy mid laner in the entire league. He does the least amount of damage after 15 minutes by his percentage. He's only doing like 22 percent of his team's damage compared to humanoid. But then you have to get, go, OK, what what champions has he been playing? Well, he's been playing like Lissandra, Silas, Swain, Zoe, TF. So I would say more roaming oriented champions for the most part. Um, and the, the counterpoint to all of this is you might say, well, he's not if he's not doing damage what what exactly is he doing well he's not taking any gold he takes the lowest percentage of cs after 15 minutes of any mid laner and guess what here's the kicker he has the highest kill participation of any mid laner in the league he may not be dealing the most damage or getting the most farm but he is in fact being in the right place when the fights are happening on the map and really contributing to that teamwork and if you look at where the resources are going, they're mostly going, as as you noted earlier, into Unforgiven. And this is a very, very good place to be in the current meta in terms of play style, because we're, I, I want to talk to you and get your thoughts on this, Kaiser. We're going to go down a rabbit hole for a while and get kind of technical, just to, because I'm, I'm you in particular I want to hear from, uh, because you guys were known last year for like Senna uh, Wukong and like, I want to see you do that again. Uh, and we're moving in that direction in the meta, I would say. But so many teams in like LCK and LPL are really putting an emphasis on the getting scaling hyper carries ahead in the early game um, and then kind of unleashing them on the map. You guys have been playing a lot of Zoe for Unforgiven and that's been highly successful for you. But it just seems like the Nisky ad as the meta goes into this direction uh, is really going to empower you. And especially for you guys, uh, for example, in LCK, we're seeing like Senna become like blue side first pick at certain times, but I haven't seen it from you guys, which it hurts me because I watch these T1 games where Korea gets to play Yasuo yeah. or like Camille and you are the fucking perfect player uh, in the West for these kind of comps. And indeed, you guys innovated a lot of these play styles. You are responsible for you know creating these ideas that are still being played around the world, um, which is really fun. And so you guys have the perfect team to activate across all of these fronts in this meta. So what is your what are your thoughts on the current bot lane meta? Because I think you guys could be absolutely amazing in this in these conditions. Uh yeah, I mean about the Senna, I think uh the champion is just kind of mm, it's kind of hard to to play with our style because uh like we like to roam a lot, right, with our support. And if you have a Senna like she doesn't really want to be alone in the lane, right? Sure. Like you kind of wanna uh, like farm with your support or like the support farms, and Senna just like takes the source, right? So you basically have like a a two man team on bot lane, stuck on bot lane that is just like farming or like maybe goes into mid lane after some time, right? Uh, but they kind of have to stay together, right? And kind of, I mean, while we did play a lot of Senna, like or some Senna in, in scrims, right? We just thought that maybe it didn't really fit our style too much, and. We just didn't really want to play it in, in, in stage games because, uh, yeah, it just kind of clashed with our, like, normal game plan. And I th we just felt like the normal game plan we had was just, like, better. And uh, Senna got nerfed as well, so I don't think we will see that much Senna anymore. Uh, especially in Europe, I think the, the champion just didn't really see any play uh, for various reasons. But I think, like, Tom Kench got nerfed as well now, uh, which was always the, the, the most blind pickable lane, I would say. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, maybe, like, we will still see some Seraphine Senna, for example. I think that is still a bit of a huge pick in, in LCK, LPL. Uh, yeah. mostly, mostly LCK, I think. But uh, yeah, we will see. But uh, I think you are correct on the on the fact that like the hyper carries are coming back into the meta a bit. Uh, like Aphidos Jinx uh, having more prior because every ADC got kind of got nerfed a bit. Like, for example, Seri was really broken. She got nerfed a bit. I think she's still strong. You can still pick her. She just has like more bad matchups, I would say. Then Aphidos, who you can basically blind pick into anything. Uh, then there's like uh, Kalista, who's like the only really strong ADC right now in the meta, like early game pick. Uh, but most teams actually figured out how to counter Kalista 
uh, nowadays in the in, in drafts. And well, example, you happen to have a Draven like, player, so that helps. Yeah, exactly. Like people <laughs> don't really like to pick uh, Kalissa into us because we have a uh, Unforgiven, who is like probably the best Draven player in LEC. And uh, yeah, I mean the thing is like. Also, the jungle meta changed a lot. I mean, the, also... the Poppy is very annoying with Callista also. Exactly. Like, Poppy, Trundle is really, really hard uh, for, for Kalista to, to, to deal with. So I think we'll see her prior drop a bit. Uh, and Aphelios just yeah doesn't really care about Trundle or Poppy, right? He can just go, like, cleanse or uh, whatever and, like, just one-shot them later, right? Like, he doesn't have to be scared of, like, a V-Sync kick from a flank or, like, a Vigo just one-shotting uh, from out of nowhere or something, right? So, uh, yeah, I think the meta just favors, like, the more tanky the meta becomes, the more uh, prior hyper carries we'll have. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's why Aphelios is popping more out uh, in the meta right now. Well, it's it is also- a weird piece of trivia. This has to be one of the only teams ever that has three fucking Wukong players on it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's actually, an, that's actually a running joke in our, in our oh, okay. uh, that, like, Ayura is like, He's not even the best Wukong in the team. Oh, he isn't. Like, yeah. Because, because the joke is they nerfed your team by making Wukong a jungler. That's you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of true. Like he, he's always like, yeah, I'm the second best. Uh, but like I'm, I'm gonna be the best Wukong soon. But he has to get through me first and then through Armut. And like we're always coaching him how, like, like for example, I think it was always really funny in new use, right? Uh, Armut was coaching him how to use W. I was coaching him how to how to use W and stuff Thank like you. this. It was always really funny because yeah, I'm just a support player and I'm coaching him. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't watching him that much. You know, I was, I was like mostly letting Amu do it because he, sure. he's obviously the best player, but uh, on on Wukong at least. But uh, yeah, I, I think it was always really, really, really funny to uh, just joke around. Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, you know the changes mean it, mean it's not. I guess it it probably uh, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say it might still be if you had the if you had the Senate, it might still be occasionally feas- feasible as support. But like flexing into the top lane is not so much of a threat at the current time. Um, Monty, let's be real. If it was vaguely plausible, <laughs> we'd be fucking. We'd well, we be playing it right now. I think of, of, of all the teams in history, buddy, this one I feel a fairly confident in. It isn't viable top but, lane. But I mean, uh, also Armut's champion pool looking super good for the top lane right now because there's so many, sure. there's so much agency when you can like first pick nar or like blind pick <laughs> nar in so many different situations it really just feels like the stars are aligning for mad lions right now with this new player unforgiven you guys able to play around him um and the addition of niski being kind of more or less perfect he's a selfless player who can play some of these like scaling control mages but also is absolutely willing to go out there with some more roaming picks uh it it, it it feels good. I'm still waiting for the you guys to play the mid Talia. Like that seems right up your alley in a lot of ways. He smiled knowingly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we watch a lot of LPL. Yeah, and we always like Knight Talia is pretty cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, and rookies as well. Like rookie is the only Talia that is like like we watch a lot of Talia, and we were like maybe this champion is not too good because only rookie made it work, right? But we will see. We will see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's certainly it's certainly a champion that uh that's been that's been doing well over there. And you know, also I think if you are uh, who knows if El Yoyo will, will play it, but at least Dom wants a team that is threatening the flex on that and uh they've uh, they've started to play it outside of basically it used to be a, a pick that Canyon would pick into Callista because it really fucks up Callista with the E. Um, but now they've they've started to use it without Callista being played, so it's fun. That's a, another Callista counter that we didn't mention that people are are starting to figure out uh, within the game. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel, then, or you know, be a pleb and don't. <laughs>